In early 2017, the T.C. Burns School of Law and Walter Harrison Law Library at the University of Queensland took up residence in the renovated wing of the Forgan Smith Building, part of the heritage-listed Great Court Complex at the heart of the St Lucia campus. I think uh, my favourite response was from a group of returning students who were in their final year and they were sitting in this area and they looked around and they said, at last we feel like we're really law students. I can really see a transformation in the culture of, of, the, of the school. People spend a lot more time working collaboratively. Uh, people spend a lot more time just talking to each other. We can already document the increase in collaborative research projects and collaborative grant applications. The first years who are being taught in the new uh, small group style of teaching, we have a 95% attendance rate without any compulsion. That's something that has become unheard of on university campuses. The core idea of learning is being able to engage with others, to have the invitation to engage with others. And we've been able to express that very clearly here by reimagining the way that there's people move through the building. That's, that's the key idea. Working within the heritage listed complex and with just two years for design and construction, the BVN design team adopted an adaptive reuse strategy, looking to create a tangible connection to the original fabric by emphasising and reusing the qualities of the existing building. Well, I went to university on this campus and this building is the first building that was built here and so it's it's got the, the, the most I guess significance in many respects because of that. So it was a great honour to work on it. We had the option, do we renovate this building or do we build a standalone new law school building or move into one of the newer buildings on campus? And the alumni were overwhelmingly opposed to us moving out of this building because they have very fond memories, sometimes not so fond, <laughs> <laughs> but fond memories of the heritage features of this building. It was dual, like it had both problematic and inspirational parts to it. The building reminded me very much of um, a sort of hospital. Closed spaces, linoleum floors, doors closed. The long corridors were clearly really problematic. Tea ladies pushing trolleys along the hallways and things like that. And aesthetically, that it was it was pretty tired. It smelt. But uh, as a heritage building, there were really wonderful parts of the building that we were able to preserve and work with in developing the new elements. They were very clever in working with the the project manager from the university to not finalise the design until the demolition had been done. Because with a building like this, you're never quite sure what you're going to find when the walls come out. Our approach to working with existing buildings, whether they're heritage or not, is to draw on their best qualities in an associative way and an interpretive way to extend existing languages and, um, and systems. I feel like we were able to transform it from being a really valued building to, to have a whole new life. The entire building has been reimagined in plan and in section and layout and the biggest thing that we did was actually to make a, a void, an arrival void. Everybody comes up through that space whether you're a student or an academic or a researcher so therefore it's a place of interactions and overlap and a lot of collaborative spaces sit on it so therefore it becomes the heart of, the, the, of this learning environment. What we've established here is like a circulation system, a system of streets, lanes, arcades, places of interaction, private spaces, public spaces. Now this idea of transparency and engagement, making a delightful place to be, has meant that uh, everybody's enjoying the place, everybody's together, everybody's interacting. And that's the, sort of the core value of being able to extend knowledge. The school's aspirational brief was clear from the outset to compete in the global market for the best students, academics and researchers. They needed a building that was more than just fit for purpose, but a place that was memorable and identifiable, locally and internationally. From the start, it was about creating these spaces where students and staff could come, in, come into and go, wow, like, this is a place, and then have that richness of detail that they could um, interact with and touch and engage with. This 
is a very much a Queensland place and a University of Queensland place. There's associations with the existing campus and the arched forms, which you see in the upper volume, plus in carpet design, all relate back to the Great Court. There are motifs on the sandstone work, which we've now incorporated into motifs here in the building, including lighting details, for example. So that sort of shield actually is part of the recollection and association with the University of Queensland. The process of the detailing began with how we imagined the staff and students would interact with each other in the space, and then imagining how could we shape the detailing to allow that to flow and allow that to really happen. So an example of that are the rails around the learning hall where students and staff or academics can just bump into each other and have a pause and have a chat and lean on the rail, being able to talk about their ideas. Like one of these small ideas could just spark into something that's a lot greater. Working with a set of craftsmen that we could really trust was a really important part of the process where we could start workshopping ideas from the get-go and refine the details and then prototype them. Lucas did some wonderful prototypes of the lamps that are in the library that have the tiny little shields that you wouldn't even notice unless you get up close. I had uh, Roberto in our studio and we just kept on prototyping things with our 3D printer just to get the scale right, get the size of the apertures, get the, the volume and scale of these fittings. And he'd bring these out to us and we'd, we'd have a look and they came in different shapes and different sizes and we, we settled on them. As a design process, it's really exciting just to be able to come up with, an, with a concept and get the team to work on these different 3D prints and overnight you could see something that, if it works, it works, if it doesn't, then we could just iterate again. Nearly a year in, much has changed at the UQ School of Law. The new building has enabled a fundamental reshaping of the teaching and learning experience, with Socratic-style seminars taking the place of traditional lectures. Collaborative research projects have increased, and the building is as popular with students of architecture and other disciplines as students of law. I think it's a really important building for the University of Queensland because what it's done is reminded the university about the inherent qualities of these buildings, not only from a sort of visual and sort of the memory of the arcade and the great court for the university, but really the inherent quality of the building itself. But it can only be revealed through adaptive reuse. And what we've done is taken a building that, in a sense, didn't match the contemporary requirements of teaching and learning and now has been made to match all of the requirements needed within the School of Law. I've also had some wonderful comments from people returning from the US who have been brave enough to say it's better than Harvard. <laughs> but I won't spread that too widely. <laughs> the staff now, they have a problem with presenteeism. People are enjoying their work here so much they forget to go home on time. So, yeah. It's, it's working really well for staff and for students and that, that just makes us really happy. I find that a lot of it is about like the, the sounds that you hear, about the little details that you see and that you touch and the colours and like the smells and how can we as architects really create a setting that allows for people to like start creating their own memory of a place. With this project it's even more important that they do have a place in a global setting where they can come back to and say it is the UQ Law School and it's quite distinct from any other place in the world.